But uh, there's no service down here tonight. Uh, and we'll meet tonight. Uh, we'll be back here Wednesday night at 6:30. Just giving the Lord glory. Don't forget though, after we, after this service here, we'll uh, some food, and fellowship. Really want you to stay in fellowship with us. Glory to God. Uh, the book of uh, Titus. Titus chapter number 2. You go after 1st and 2nd Timothy, you'll find Titus chapter number 2. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Man, I just, presence of the Lord. So sweet. Amen. Appreciate all, all this music. Amen. Titus chapter number 2. Put your finger on it. Go back to Matthew chapter 1. You really begin to recognize the awesomeness of God when you begin to look to look for Him. You know, a lot of times we don't see what the Lord's doing. For the simple reason, our, our view is too low. We're looking into the natural instead of the supernatural. I want to tell you, if you desire to see him, he, he's, he's here. He's in your life. Glory to God. Matthew chapter number 1. Verse number 18. We'll take our text from 21, but Matthew 1 and 18, you got it? Say amen. Amen. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord this amen. morning? Amen. amen. Some preachers always said, rather be in the house of God than any hospital. I never understood that concept. I don't want to be in a hospital no time. Come on. I want to be in the house of God all the time. Come on. So maybe one of you can enlighten me what that means. Uh, I don't know, but... Uh, Thank God we're here this morning in Matthew 1 and 18. And now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Let's look at that again. Before they came together, before they, they yeah. come on, yeah. were intimate, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, was not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. In the book of Titus, chapter number 2. We'll take a text from 11 to 13, but it's just... it. The rest of it is just so good. We start in verse 1. Paul writes, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity and patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not of false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the younger women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, 
obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded. In all things showing thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine showing uncorruptedness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them well in all things not answering again, not prolonging but showing all good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. One more time. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Pray with me here, Father, we so give you glory and praise. And if you'll hide me behind your glorious cross and anoint my lips this morning, Father. God, I'm so inadequate without you, but I can do all things through you, Lord. Father, anoint our ears and our hearts to hear and receive, Father, the word of God now. We pray, God, that you move and that you have your way, Lord. Again, we thank you for each and every person present. Be with those that, that might be off, working or sick, Lord traveling or whatever God keep your hands on and we pray as we careful to give you the glory the praise and the honor and we ask all this in Jesus wonderful name and let the church say amen, amen. why don't you give the Lord a good hand clap and praise <laughs> glory to God amen amen looking unto the Savior I mean, those we read in Matthew that some things God done that men didn't know about. The angel come to Mary one day. He did seek her consent. Yes, he did because, because this can only be accomplished in, to be consensual, amen, to the person that's required or asking. You know, it, it, it's, it's like this. If we would come to you this evening and, and, and say, uh, Brother Doug, Sister Jackie, would it be okay if we, Sister Victoria just rides home with us? We would wait for your consent before we could we could further the 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 uh, proclamation or the invitation. A amen. Because the proper order is is, is to go, and we she's don't crawl in the car with us, go home, and everybody's like, where'd it go? Dear God, did we miss the rapture? Huh? Come on. No, there's an order. There's a plan. And in God, it's the same way. God's had a plan from a long time ago. He said, now, there's going to come a day that I'm not going to be so pleased. I'm not well pleased with the, with the blood sacrifices of bull or sheep. Uh, there's going to be a whole thing in the Old Testament was to take its rightful place within the new. Uh, and everything done in the Old Testament was to point to Jesus Christ. Uh, all the way through the tabernacle and all the settings and, 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 and all the artifacts and everything that the priest done. Uh, in fact, the writer of Hebrews said that, that uh, Jesus was a type of that high priest of the old. But he's a more perfected priest, amen, huh? being the son of God. Huh? And we find now that, that through the time that when, when Mary consented her will, huh? she didn't understand it, but she pondered it and kept it in her heart. Huh? She just simply said, you do with me, you do with me with what you see fit, oh God. Huh? And friend, can I tell you, I think that's a prayer that the church should pray every day. Lord, it's not my way, it's not my will, but your will be done, oh God, huh? that we can do we can become the we can become the the, 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 the work or the labor of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but you will never accomplish this until you learn to look at him uh, and look for him. Because there are some times in this life uh, that you might not see. Uh, you might look too low. Uh, you might look, amen, and not see, not understand because you're so caught up in the present trial. But if you'll look to Jesus, the 
the author and the finisher of your faith. You will see him every time. Paul wrote to the Galatian church, my little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. This is an ongoing work, saint of God. You don't receive Christ and you've arrived at all. This is an ongoing everyday work. And I'm a firm believer that, that every day of our life we've got the possibility and potential to grow closer to him or to draw away from him or, or, or draw back to where we once come from. And friend, I want to tell you that it's, it's not fit for you to be in the kingdom of God, for us to be in the kingdom of God. If we say yes to the Lord, then start looking back. Because if we look back, it's just going to draw us right back into things that God delivered us from. And how many knows by scriptures that we go back to work out of the whole pit that God drew us out of, we'll have seven, it's seven times worse, friend. Brother Larry, I don't know, but I know in my life, I don't want to be seven times worse than what I once was. I want to tell you, friend, there's nothing good in this world. There's nothing to go back to. That's why we got to forget those things which are behind and press it towards the high calling of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many know I'm not seeking God for a crown of gold but the crown of gold comes with the seeking of God. And we're going to one day obtain our purpose just to get there and cast our crowns at his feet. And this time here where Mary had just pondered this the angel said it, and the holy, she was impregnated by the Spirit of the Lord. There's a seed deposited within her soul now. And understand, God's plan consisted of using the natural as well as the supernatural. Because everything fits, and God fits things in His plan. The Bible said now she's impregnated. And now that she, uh, they, 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 they went down because there's a decree made, a law that's been made, that they was going to go in in a time of taxation, amen, and have a given account. Just remember, uh, Augustus Caesar was ruling, but God was in charge, friend. I said God uses the ordinary. Listen, God's using the, the, the political. I better not say that. The political, just, just horrendous problems of, of, of the White House. But he's using that to get his bride ready, friend. Yeah, Come right. on now. Yeah. We didn't think there was no way possible for that next president to be who the president is now. And we all can say, well, he's just he's a pawn and we know this and that. But can I tell you, he wouldn't have got there unless God, or, uh, come on, yeah. unless God put it there. And it's for a reason. I want to tell you, all through Bible history, God has used the uh, he used tyrants, amen, uh, to, to correct his church. Uh, but in all of the Nebuchadnezzars and all the Caesars and in uh, all the Pilots, uh, he had never allowed none of that to destroy his church. Uh, they brought him in ex they brought him to exile, they brought him to prisons, uh, they put taxations on him. Uh, but in the midst of let me tell you, when Ezekiel, uh, when Ezekiel got a caught a vision uh, of that man. Uh, with a measurement in his hand. They were in Babylonian captivity. Come on. When John, the revelator, was caught up to God on the Lord's day in the spirit, he's on an aisle of Patmos with nothing but murderers and rapists and pedophiles. But he still found a way to be what God called him to be, to get caught up in the spirit. So we would quit looking so much at the natural and always say, Lord, I don't know your whole thing mindset. I don't know the eternal plan for today outside that you called us to be the body of Christ. To be the ambassadors of the representation of a resurrected Lord. Amen. So Mary and Joseph now, they're 80 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem to fulfill God's word. Rome took a census every 14 years for both military and for tax purposes uh, and each Jewish male had to return to the city of his fathers to record his name, occupation, property, and family. We still don't like the censorship today, do we? It's been around a long time. But look, but when Mary said, be it unto me according to thy word, it meant that from, from then on, her life would be a part of the fulfillment of divine prophecy. 
Can I tell you? We're surrounded by people that comes from all walks of life. Some, some we can say, uh, uh, not much education. Others all educated. Some might be, you know, on a social status, and others say they're not. But none of that matters, friend. None of that matters. What matters is the Spirit of God is called out to His people. And when we become His people, it's for the simple fact we have died to self uh, and said, Lord, here I am. Uh, use me for whatever you your purpose is uh, not mine. I want to go ahead and tell you, I've told you before, if it's left to me, you will never see me holding a microphone. Not even the same world in music. Uh, they handed me a microphone uh, on, on, on a boat uh, when we were floating around Long Island. They ordered, my little brother got married. Uh, they had security guards on that boat. Uh, they, went, they had their hands in their tucks in and they wasn't pledging the Lord. Uh, there was Calvin Klein's high representatives on that boat. Uh, and they asked me to say something about my brother. I was like, well, you keep the microphone. They said, no, put the microphone here. That was my first train with a microphone. Amen. Because back in school, I was, I, was, I, was, I was too nervous. I didn't want, I don't want the attention today. But I just, do. I yielded myself to God. And God said, let them see me through you, son. Grab a microphone. Don't tell them about what you think, but tell them what the Word of God says. Now, amen. At times when I don't feel like I can be heard, I said, turn me up a little bit. Why? Because it's not my words. It's his words. It's not my ministry. It's his ministry. This ain't my church. This is a body. This is the body of believers come together that we can celebrate and love the Lord Jesus Christ. But before anything can happen in your life, you've got to consent it over to God. You've got to say, here it is, God. I'll get out of the way. I might, you, you know, they, they give you a little form. To, they'll get, they, listen, there's some denominations, they put a little, a piece of work paper in your hand. It's to, it, you take the test to see what kind of gifts you qualify in. Mm. Telling you the gospel truth here. Well, bless God. This sister here, man, she done good at, she's high on prophecy. This one's real strong in prayer. This is, so then they make the whole ministry out of something that they, they scratch down on a piece of paper because they answered four or five or maybe 17 questions. Let me tell you, you want to be used of God? Get yourself out of the way and say, God, not my will, but your will be done. Come on, somebody. Because I'm listening. Glory to God. You might can sing like a canary, but God might not have that in your ministry. Come on. Make your call and election sure. Glory to God. And no matter what it is, if you will do it with all of your might, heart, body, and soul, God will bless it every time. For somebody, it might just be walking around Walmart. You got more time and money, so you're not there to you're not there to shop, but you are there to spend. Watch this. I said you're not there to shop, but you are there to spend. Meaning you're going to expend. You're going to spend. Amen. You're going to deposit. You're going to invest some God into that person that's over on aisle three. You don't know them for nobody. But you know what? God knows them. And they need somebody just to join up with them and say, God put me on you on my heart to come over here right now and just check on you. Come on. Is this all right, somebody? Can I tell you, God still does some things. Sometimes you got to broaden the egg and milk and bread list. you got to. you got to say, God is first and foremost. What? What do you want from me? We want to call it. But the call that we want at times, the call that we want at times is that everybody knows we're called. But sometimes, you just matter if God, if God calls you. Am I too loud or what's going on? In the hall. Too loud in the hall. I don't know. But we're too loud in the hall. But I tell you what. Make your call in the election sure. Now Mary's there for a purpose. She was never to be elevated in the Catholic Church to be the Queen of Heaven. Don't get mad at me. Just hear me. She was never, she never, not one day. You, you go get to Mary one day. When we get to Mary, so we're going to get to Mary. And Mary's going to be plump red faced with all the extra attention went to her. Because that was never in her heart. Do with me, O oh Lord. She's a blessed woman. Come on. She's blessed because the Bible says she is. Uh, but she birthed, she birthed a son of God. But when you find them in Acts chapter 2 now, for the birthing of the church, uh, she's right there with a faithful 120. And then when she walks, when she exits that, that upper room uh, with Peter, James, John, and the rest of them that's there, you don't hear from her again. You know why? Because she's, she's 
listen, she's fulfilled the ministry that God has put in her heart. Uh, let me tell you, my friend, uh, if, if sometimes you got to understand uh, that you were born, uh, that you were born just to born somebody else. Uh, amen. Uh, you might not, we might not ever get the credit, uh, or we might not ever meet the criteria that the public uh, puts on us, uh, but she was born to a purpose. Uh, and when she said, be it unto me according to thy will, Lord. Uh, and I ask anybody today, uh, is there somebody here that would just simply say, uh, Lord, use me the way that you desire to be. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. The greatest event, the greatest event that happened back then is still one of the, the smallest things that's ever happened in the, in, the, in the human mindset. But the greatest event on such a small scale was this. This decisive world historical birthday took place in a small land of a small village of a small providence of a small nation. The country, the, the country of about the size of Rhode Island. It was the greatest of events on the smallest of scales. There are some who think that all events and characters are to be measured by the magnitude of the stage on which they appear. This event, known as a mere speck and an insignificant happening to most. But the moment we look below the surface and find that the truth conveyed to us by the birth of the world's redeemer in a village, a little village of Bethlehem, is the likeness of a principle which speaks far and wide, friend. The truth which needs especially to be impressed on us this day is that simply bigness is not necessarily greatness. Everybody wants a big one. Give me a big job, a big ministry. Give me a big limelight. Give me the this and that. But I, I want to tell you, friends, some of the greatest treasures in Bible teaching, some of the greatest warfares uh, and battles that was won come from a, a small stone. Come on. Uh, a jawbone of a donkey. Come on. Uh, I, I want to tell you just these little things. Uh, that through the scriptures, they speak magnitudes to us. Uh, so sometimes bigness is not necessarily greatness. Uh, I said, God, keep me from the vanity of watching that TV in and wanting what they got. Come on. I want to tell you it's all about them and their ministries and their jets and their and all these things. I want to tell you, I don't know. I don't know the hellfire is going to be hot enough to melt, melt in jet planes. But I'm here to tell you, if they're using a jet plane to promote their own ministry and not giving God all the glory for it, can I tell you it's going to melt like wax. Oh, friend, listen. I said Mary and Joseph some, sometimes one life will appear to have been solely devoted to the more selecting, developing, energizing of another. Now Mary, Mary has given birth to the Son of God. She was, there, she was right there with him when they drug him down them streets. It was, she was right there with him when they hung him on, the, on Calvary's tree. She was right there when, when Jesus looked down from that cross and said to John, Behold thy mother. Behold thy son. They, she, was, she was faithful. And, she, and, and with every little thing that, that God had asked of her, she was faithful. Her heart was rent, torn. And the, the horrific death that she watched her son die upon Calvary's tree. But it was for a purpose, friend. Her husband, Joseph, the Nazarene carpenter. He shows himself in the early history of the, uh, of the Beth Bethlehem child, Jesus. But scripture, after it's exhibited, how useful he was in guarding the reputation of the vir virgin mother, he's dis the scripture dismisses him so suddenly that nobody knows where he's buried or even where he died. That his, his life is done now. It, that he's complete. But he's not, listen, he's complete. So he's satisfied in God now. But listen, remember the, remember the, the mother Hannah. Hannah was, was persecuted by, by her husband's other wife that she was having children. Hannah could have no children. Her life is so humble. It seems linked with, 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 with a purpose no more extraordinary than anybody else's life. She would come to the high priest at least twice a year. Yet every time she came, it was so unremarkable that he, she had to tell him who she was. Uh, he, she kept continued to repeat her name in, in the petition that she had. But one day, God heard her prayer. 
I said God heard her prayer. And then from that day for a few years uh, to the wean of her infant Samuel, uh, she brought the little coat uh, every year. And, and that's about all that we know of the purposes life, of the purpose life of Hannah. I said she brought a little coat uh, to the to the future prophet named Samuel. Uh, think about it. Was that, what, was that not a great purpose? Could we not all been satisfied with that? Uh, this purpose would produce a great prophet. Uh, her lineage, her legacy now uh, is through as far as, uh, as, far as the evolution uh, of another step. Uh, she's been to the side now. She's done what God's asked her to do. Uh, but she done uh, because she made herself ready and available uh, in praying and petitioning God every year. Just give me a child, Lord, uh, and I'll give you back to you. Uh, but the day uh, that that child broke through the, the matrix uh, of that womb uh, and come gushing forth, uh, the man child, uh, I wonder if God got in her ear and said, remember, remember the oath that you made unto me, the plea in your time of agonizing around the altar. And I believe Hannah said, yes, Lord, I remember and I shall make my promise good. And when that child was weaned, hear, old priest, this boy belongs to the Lord now. Think about it. Andrew, one of the, the chosen of the twelve that Jesus himself chose. But all we read about this man is so he's true and good. But the only thing we find is that he brought Simon Peter to Jesus. Hey, Brother Peter, come. We have found the Messiah. Now all of a sudden, he's locked out of the intimate circle between Jesus with Peter, James, and John. He, go, he travels with the 12, but he's not a part of the full 12. Come on. He's, he's always set back a stone's cast. And Jesus, Peter, James, and John takes a few more steps. See, that's hard to swallow right there because of our pride and arrogance and our notability of we need to, we need to hear our name called, uh, that we don't want to be left out. Uh, when somebody says a name, uh, we should have our name involved. Uh, but thank God the love that Andrew had, uh, even though that he didn't know how this thing was going to shake out, but he knew by faith he found the Messiah and he got his physical brother involved. Uh, but oh, how many times could he cop, cop the attitude of the old man, the older brother attitude, uh, with the parable of the prodigal son. Huh? When the young son comes back, huh? the party's raised, the celebration. Huh? The old son never left unless he's on the outside now. Andrew could have been the same way. But Lord, I'm the one mentioning it to God. Lord, don't forget, I'm the one brought it to you. I Do I get, when I, I tell you, uh, Jesus, uh, listen, huh? never had to come out and tell Andrew, just wait your turn. It's going to all be arrayed and ordained of heaven itself. Huh? He never had to go back and, and make him cheer. He never had to go back and pat him on the back and tell him. Why? Because he simply was grateful to be a part of what God was doing. Yes, sir. They got a thing in college sports called the trans transfer portal. A player comes to this university and he's got the... He's got the ability or the option he can transfer out to another university. And I've never seen the star players ever transfer. Come, come, come on. What I'm saying, there's, there's been a shift in it. They, they don't feel like they might could, they might could better benefit themselves somewhere else. But I want to tell you, not careful, we transfer out of what God's wanting to do with us. I've watched it happen right here already. What well, minister? We we our time is well okay. If, if, if God's time, though it ain't your time, ain't my time. It's God's time, right? And, and, and we're not going to transfer out too quickly. Because somebody promised us a rose garden somewhere. Somebody said, oh, come and join yourself over here. Let me tell you, the worst thing you can ever do is go join yourself to something without checking in with Jesus first. Yeah. Come on. Let me tell you, you know why I make this drive three times a week? And you know why I pastor this church? And you know why it's so long? And I, I reach for my phone, can't get internet service. Uh, we, listen, it's so primitive down here and all that because Jesus told me to. Come on. Yeah. Uh, hey, come on. It's because of a call. Uh, Hey, listen, that's why I always tell people I'm not 
not so interested if we enjoy it or not as long as we've been ministered to. Yeah. That's the whole yeah. ticket right there. we got to know that we know that we know that this is exactly where God wants us. And if it is settling, if the devil rares up, he don't have a leg to stand on. If the neighbor said you need to come over there, you don't have to run off because God has got you where God wants you to be. And if you come for any other reasons, it more, more so than not, it won't work out. Because you always be looking over your shoulder. Yeah. Amen. You're always going to try to feel your way. And then when you get your feelings hurt, gone. Come on. Then you go set yourself in something with more problems. Because for some reason, everybody's got this fantasy of the perfect church. <laughs> Can I tell you there's, where, where, where there's people involved? Ain't nothing ever going to be perfect. But let people come and get Jesus. And you we're in perfect peace with Jesus. I want to tell you, everything will go just fine. Come on, somebody. Listen, let me, let me hurry up. I, I know you're hungry, but listen. All this is to say this. Mary produced the Son of God. Yes, and please don't think I was preaching down on anything. I'm just telling you the, the stark reality of this. That Mary never asked for more than... Come on. Mary never cleared her throat and said, remember me. No, sir. Mary never said, uh, I'm going to be up there. The, 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 the organization, the denomination is trying to make the Godhead a four-part thing now. You, you understand that. Mary didn't ask for that. She didn't, listen, she didn't come down and breathe into the high priest or the popes here and say, well, no, no. That's people wanting all that. There's a petition right now that's in the Vatican in Rome to try to get Mary a part of the Godhead. Let me tell you, I hope and pray that the, the, the popes or whoever's in charge over there will have enough audacity to say it ain't like that because God said the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Come on. He didn't say blessed mother. Don't get her, don't get up get out of shape with me. I mean, she's had her place. She'll always have her place. And when you get there, hallelujah, you won't bow down at her feet, but you'll probably give her a good old hug. Come on, somebody. You know why? Because she's our sister in Christ. Come on. She's not the queen mother. Come on, somebody. We got we got hug. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't need help from nobody. I said, but we, uh, my God, He is the answer. Yeah. 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 I said, oh, 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 the nominational monster will rise up when you start preaching like that. Uh -huh. You just need to settle who you are in Christ. Yeah. Come on, some folks just get so indoctrinated in religion. And, but let me tell you, friend, religion don't save you. Jesus saves you. Come on, Jesus. I said, Jesus, the seeking shepherd. Oh, yeah, Luke 19 and 10, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Glory to God. I said, Jesus, the fulfiller of every word that God ever spoke. Matthew 5 and 17, he says, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am come, I am not come to destroy but to fulfill and aren't you glad that he's fulfilled his plans? Glory to God. Amen. I said, Jesus, uh, the faithful servant. He said in Matthew 20 and 28, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and I give, and to give his life a ransom for many. Woo. Glory to God. Somebody said, well, that's probably his check down right there. He's ready. Not yet. Not to tell you about Jesus, the fire baptizer. Luke 12 and 49, Jesus said, I've come to send fire on the earth, and what will I if there be already kindled? He's looking for the fire on the earth. He's looking. Listen, he even told that one, he said, when I come back, shall I find faith on earth? Amen. He's looking. He's giving you the seed of faith. Let that thing be deposited that the fire of God can burn in you. That's why we need the Holy Ghost and fire. Man, the old singer said it, it, it keeps us alive. Yeah. The glory of God. I said it keeps us alive. We need the Holy Ghost uh, and we need the fire of God because the fire becomes a purger. It becomes to purify our souls. Amen. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, we'll vessel and if we don't stay plumb full of Jesus, other things will get in there. And before long, hallelujah, 
uh, uh, pure perfume can be burnt by one dead fly. Leave a dead fly in that perfume and the oils off that fly will begin to mix with the oils uh, uh, and the chemical reaction and stuff and it will never smell. Oh, sister, oh, I bought me some good perfume. And man, you've been smelling good, but all of a sudden... Man, that don't smell right. That's smell like a dead fly. That's scripture. You're a dead fly to ointment. That ain't no good. And I'm just thinking with her there. But I'm telling you, sometimes we put off an odor. Our attitude gets stinky. Come on. Our disposition gets uh, pertinent. Oh, yes, sir. We, we, we begin to think, you know. And then when we, we get a little bit too liberated. Huh? But I'm telling them for their own good. But yeah, but you got to tell you to tell them for their own good. So we always want to be the watch person and, and we want to be the school teacher and we want to be the judge and the jury and we want to, but if not careful, if we get out of line with God, then we begin to destroy relationships instead of still embrace relationships or yeah, I'm still out there. Said Jesus, the blind eye opener. Jesus said, For judgment I am come in the world that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. Think about that. See, he told him Pharisees, he said, you, you have eyes, but you see not. Because all they saw was the, the, the wrong with everybody. They saw their religion, their pious. They, they tried to preach you under a lifestyle that themselves wouldn't even try to fulfill. And that's called hypocrisy. Anything we do, when we, when we say we're full of Jesus and do things contradictory to the word of God, God looks at us as hypocrites. Right? Jesus, the abundant life giver. Jesus, the witness of truth. Man, I want to tell you, Jesus, he's our willing Savior. He's our living Savior, our present Savior, our personal Savior, and our sympathizing Savior. Somebody say if we had a if we had a night service tonight, that might have been a good place to stop and preach right there. I said he's a willing savior. He's he's willing to step out and go the extra mile. If you're willing to stand still when you're so bogged down with the pollution of this earth to say, Lord, I can't get to you. I want to tell you, there was times in Jesus' ministry that he called them and they came. But then there was others, amen, that that that, that couldn't make the trip. He went over. My God, friend, let me tell you, he He's willing. He's a willing Savior to do what you need in your life. But he's not a genie in a bottle. He don't give you a ten-plot wish list. He just wants you to simply submit your all to him. And I think I'm surrounded by people right now that have submitted their ways to the Lord. Stand to your feet and give Jesus a good praise. If you're right here in church, or he'll watch you when you're a million miles away. That's right. He'll watch you while you're well, and he'll help you when you're sick. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You can walk in all the joy and the splendor of Jesus himself, or you can be so low that you don't know if you're going to be able to make one step. But can I tell you, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Elder, he says he'll be with us to the ends of the earth. And that's good news. Sister Jackie, there's times we've had to walk in some low places. Come on, sir. Come on, saints of God. And sometimes we've been in some dark places. Sometimes it just seems like life don't make sense. At times it'd be easier to quit than to go on. At times we just say we just ought to just fall down and die. I don't think I can take another step. But in the very moment you can't take that next step, you hear a wind. A wind of the eagle. Glory to God. He'll sweep down. He'll swoop down and take you and bear you upon the wings of evil. Come on, somebody. He'll hide you in his bosom. He'll tell you it's going to be all right, child. That's why we got to look unto Jesus. My, my, my. He's everything. And I'm going to say like the old preacher, when I come in this way, this is what they say. He's going to be everything or he'll be nothing at all. He'll be everything to you or he'll be nothing in you. That's why you've got to have him all. That's why you can't just have him when, you, when, you, when your belly's a growl. You've got, you, you, you got to have him more than when you just need a, a, a raise on your paycheck. You've got to have him more just to come bail you out of your stuff that we don't got 
messed up with. He becomes your first your first thought in the morning, your last thought at night. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Old body just this morning. I'm about trying to bounce me right out of the bed. I said, but before I fell out to put my feet on the floor, I said, Good morning, Jesus. Yeah. I wanted to complain about he cups all night and, and all that. You know, our mind can do that. But I said, No, good morning, Jesus. Yeah. This is another day that you created. Yeah. Glory to God. This is another day that you've created. See, we celebrate Jesus one day on a Sunday. We call it the Holy Day. Can I tell you, the Holy Day is seven days a week. Come on. And I ask you this morning, are you willing to get out of the way and let Jesus do in you and through you that what he wants to do in you? Man, I want to tell you one of the greatest sins I ever heard. Sometimes in the forest, the big trees has got to be taken out of the way that the little trees can begin to grow. Yeah. And that's good preaching until you're the big tree and God's ready to harvest you in order to take you out of the way. Come on. Yeah. I told the church uh, Monday night before we got started, good, I honored the pastor of the church. And that place, I've got deep roots there. But I didn't go there to pastor Monday night. I went, I went there to preach, evangelize, whatever God wants. But I, I told the congregation, this is the way God had me do it. You know, the Elijah and Elijah, I preached the ordination. Elijah and Elisha, they're walking together. The old man's still, still putting the resources into the young man. And I had everybody close their eyes. And we walked up. Before they closed out, we got to the pulpit. And I had them close their eyes. And the, the fire of God's fixing to fall. Now the chariot's fixing to come and pick up the old man of God. And I said, it's, and there, there were two. And I simply just stepped up behind the piano over there, and I said, you can open your eyes now. And then there was but one. And you know, that, 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 that resonates with me because there's a, there's a lot of truth in that. You can't split your time with Jesus. You can't prefer. Some folks might not move move forward enough that God wants you to move forward because the pastor that, that, that you were under, he's not here no more. And that's no, that's no proclamation of anything, but that's anywhere. That happened with us in North Lewis, and I'm not the pastor anymore. But there's a man qualified here to be the pastor. Amen. But yet, even though our tender affection towards the people that said, I still love my pastor, Brother Wayne Robeg. Can I say his name again? Amen. I love Brother Wayne. And he's my pastor. If I need him, he'll be right there that I can come. But we begin to move now and sense where God is. It, it, what's God doing in my life? Have you ever asked God? Have you ever just really searched yourself and say, God, what are you doing in my life? He wants to do something. Do you realize that? Yeah. But sometimes you, to hear him, you've got to quit talking. you got to, those that have an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit says. He done all this, but sometimes it's nothing more but than just to keep you at a certain place at a certain time to fulfill in you that you become an asset to help somebody else's growth. And I want to be here to help people's growth. That's why I got no condemnation in my lips. That's why I don't want to be crude and rude, hard to people. That's why I want to be caring. I know you want the same thing. You want to be caring, preferring yourself others before yourself. Though we fall short sometimes, don't we, guys? Yes. Can we be honest up in, yes. on our jobs or, or, or where we find ourselves or not out and about? Sometimes we're not careful, we fall short. But you know what? Because he saved us by grace, we're able to continue to operate in his presence by his provisions. And his provision, number one, is his spirit that must have every ounce of our being. These altars will be opened. You said...